There's no untidy, uncontrolled sprawl on the edge of this town, but a green belt of farm and forest which will never be built upon. You can see they build the housing tightly in groups, and this releases broad reaches of green space which finger through the whole town. This is, I think, one of the great lessons of these English new towns. This is the market square in Harlow. The main principle in modern town planning is this idea of separating the movement of traffic from places of activity. Harlow is very successful in this respect. The main roads converge on the center and encircle it. The town center itself is free from through traffic. In Harlow, the markets, shops, theaters, businesses, and administration form the active heart of the town. On market days, the square is a hive of activity, but there are also places to sit and relax. As in all the British new towns designed on the neighborhood principle, Harlow has a main town center. Grouped about it are nine carefully planned neighborhoods, each with its own smaller neighborhood center. It's rather nice in Harlow to see some bits and pieces of other days and other ways left over from the original village. This house has been turned into a community center. You see a kind of tender provision in English or European towns for the young children. This is a daily nursery school which looks after the children of working mothers during the day. Residential areas and shopping areas are rather cheerfully mixed up together. Each neighborhood center has the traditional pub and a few stores which provide the essentials. It is assumed that women in Harlow go to the main shopping center only once a week. This neighborhood center is for the convenience of daily needs. It is a pleasant walk from the home with a baby carriage, and children can safely come here alone. Nearby, there is a building which is used for meetings and social functions. The children growing up in Harlow will certainly accept sculpture as normal and pleasant features of a town. Sculpture is in abundance in Harlow, and some is in quiet, secluded places. Active recreation and passive recreation and beauty seem to be the three functions of open spaces in the town. There's a lot to be learned from Harlow about where the play area should be, how close to the houses, and what kinds of age groups need various kinds of equipment. Here's the famous family group statue by Henry Moore. Schools are well situated, plenty of play areas. Each of the nine neighborhoods has its own primary school. The secondary school serves several neighborhoods. Here's another example of old amid the new in Harlow, a 12th century church. A footpath, bicycle path, and a road, excellent examples of the separation of traffic. The footpath and bicycle path run through the park, which is very skillfully landscaped and shows beautiful adjustment to its site. All existing trees and slopes are utilized, and there are safe walks for children. This is a factory area, close to the residential area, but clearly separated from the housing. Many of the people working here can get to work on foot or by bicycle. Street signs are well thought out and designed. It's been a tremendous boon to get all the overhead wiring out of the way. Poles and wires are one of the ugliest trademarks of North American suburbs. Notice there's a good sense of compactness in all the streets here. This is important. 
It's not just an aesthetic foible that people have to get the feeling that they are sheltered and looked after. And this kind of planning helps people to belong within a group of buildings or an area within a town and to take a pride in it. Homes for old people. In our suburb, the housing seems to be designed for young people only. Though apartments and row houses predominate in Harlow, there are some very attractive semi-detached and single houses. Travelling through the town, you can appreciate the continuity of the green spaces. There's another small neighbourhood shopping centre. Visual accent on a tower within a group of buildings is very valuable. It gives the residents a sense of identity. For instance, this neighbourhood, Mark Hall North, has its central tower apartment house and it livens up the skyline in an area of low houses. This is one of the loveliest parts of the new town of Harlow. It has a lot of dignity with the lawn, the very ingenious high building with the elevator and the stairs in the middle, and all the apartments abundantly exposed to the view and the sunlight. But most important, it is an identifying symbol for the neighborhood, and it can be seen from many parts of the town. An interesting problem posed by these very nice row houses and terraces and high buildings set in landscaped grounds is who owns and who looks after these landscaped grounds. To do this, we need a new approach to development and maintenance, both at the community and municipal level. This man earns $35 a week, out of which he pays $6 a week rent on his three-bedroom rural house, or roughly a sixth of his income. Most homes in Harlow have pleasant exterior views. This one is from the living room onto a wooded garden. You're not looking into a neighbor's window or an ugly backyard. Looking the other way, this is the view from the front window. 